Hello, my dear ones. Again, it's always a pleasure to sit with you and converse on the facts of life. Fun stuff. You always want to make your life fun. Because if you don't, then who pays that? You do. You know? So, you always want to be the king of your own world, so to speak. Give love to all of life, but be the main consciousness, the, the entity of you. Don't give yourself away. You can love and, and have an incredible spiritual relationships and not give yourself away. That breeds attachment and fear. Someone asked yesterday about fear and things like this. Separation. That's why the one, you know, when you leave the one and become the many, when, when the one creates creation, or consciousness manifests itself in form, which is states of consciousness, then their separation from the one, or the appearance, the appearance of separation, and therefore the loneliness and those sort of things, fear comes in and you get lonely, so to speak. And the ironic thing about this the thing that drove me deeper and deeper into the Godhead is the alone state. Paul Twitchell wrote a book called That Alone Exists. And that ties into the Christianity, the all in the all, all the other religions, even I think even uh, the Hinduism, Upanishads and stuff, even though there are different lower deities that are channels for the power of this. Uh, I still believe they all believe in the one God. But realize you're a chip of that. You're, you're just as much of that as everything else is. And you should never, never deny your own worthiness and spirituality and happiness. Because when your final analysis is, you control everything. And you control it with your desires and your attention. We're talking about your journey in creation. And so, if you want to experience love and, and happiness and have the good things of life, then you have to give that. So, sometimes you have to watch yourself, watch your attitudes and things, and make sure that, is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? You know, sometimes before you say things, the good idea to make sure is it kind, you know, is it, is it going to be kind, unless you really mean to dig it in there. Is it true, first, second of all, you want to make sure that everything you fight over or you want to deal with anything over is the truth. I see all the fighting people go over on all these things, uh, supplements and different diets and stuff, and I have to laugh at all that. Because the truth is truth, and the, and the cord goes through all of chemistry and physics and sciences. Nature paths don't have a piece of the truth, and medical doctors and everybody has the truth. It doesn't work that way. But I appreciate every one of you guys and all the hard work that you put into this, the time spent. But doesn't it feel good? Don't you feel so much better? You know, it, the tell is always told when you go out and eat something bad. You know, it's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know now. And that happens a lot in one's life, and depending on stress factors and significant other factors and things like that drives you to eating certain ways. It is almost that these different states of consciousness, with even in the human state itself, different diets are tied to that. Different foods are tied to frequencies and vibrations. And so is emotions. So it's funny, I mean this thing is so exacting, it's almost unreal. But the very nature of your eating habits of course, affects your bodies totally. It's chemistry, but the most important thing is magnetics. It's energetics. It's frequencies, and they can be out of harmony with your frequency. A lot of the foods that man eat is just simply out of harmony with our frequencies. So it not only lowers our frequencies, it pulls us to the wrong side of chemistry. 
And in doing that, then it affects our whole experience. It breeds fear, breeds anxiety, not just that there's physiological weaknesses that are tied to that, but just just the, the factors of um, what we were saying leads into these sort of uh, emotional weaknesses and mental weaknesses and the perception. You know, it's all about perception and one way of looking at it. If you perceive yourself to be a little humanoid uh, in a little human body and that's who you are, then that's who you will perceive yourself to be. And interesting to note that you're so, 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 so much more. You're part of the Creator that created everything. You just forgot that. And how you remember that is you quit mind writing. You quit chasing thoughts and desires and spend some time living in the present moment where there is no time, there is no duality. And that pulls you into the allness of things and you'll be able to experience more and more and memories and awarenesses and everything just start clicking in you know and you start remembering a lot more but most importantly you're becoming the most beautiful gorgeous being that you each and every one already are and that's what's important right now in these negative times and things is that we wake up to our divinity that that this is just the game we've been playing and that the game just seems to keep going and going and this is why we must interject a hey it's it, it's time to stop it's time to uplift ourselves on this planet and create a higher level of awareness on this planet it's played its dark agey stuff too long so, you know, it's just awareness like the guys that went in and killed the priest, you know. I mean, give me a break. You killed the priest. I mean, that's how low these states of consciousness are in these people. And it's, it, it's just got to change. It's got to be uplifted. And I think everything is effectual to that. Not only the diets, but, you know, those around and everything else. So, it's interesting how God's going to change all this. But... The one thing you can count on is that if you're open to it and you're giving and helping others and stuff, you will be a channel for the God force on all levels. And it's just, that's how it works. Good stuff. Okay, so this is Kurt. This is going to be more q and A. I apologize for that, but I just kind of want to catch up. I've got some serious cases going on and boy, there's some hurting people out here in the uh, woods, <laughs> the woods of planet Earth. Um, dear Dr. Morris, you are phenomenal and have become a personal hero of mine. <laughs> I love you right off, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, thanks, my friend. I appreciate it. Listen, if anything, you tap all that you see that you like, you tap that within yourself because you only recognize in me what's in you. So, your guys are the divine. <laughs> Love the YouTube videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think we have a pretty good channel, and a lot of people have got their remedy and, and out of Hellville, and it's just sad to see the level of suffering that is out there. You know, you we are being involved in this at the level we are, you, you see it quite a bit more than most people, but it's still even a lot for us when you take a look at how much is out there. Sad stuff, man. I've changed my diet about three months ago. Switched to fruit in the morning. Good idea, man. Good idea. The green salad for lunch, that's okay. Giving up on dairy and grains, excellent. I mean, you just saved yourself a big deal. You know, dairy is as nice as a malt or whatever it is. I'm telling you, that stuff is just pure nasty. You know, and I, we weren't dairy farmers, but my sister had some dairy farms herself, went into that short term, but I've been on a lot of dairy farms and it's like my uncle was a dairy farmer and it's like, no, stinky, no way. And then did the milk, ugh. I, I, I just remember all the migraines and all the sinus and all the extreme constipation over milk. And I'm looking, what? You know, and it's, it's just like, here we are feeding our children a cow's milk in the 21st century. It's just an asinine. 
that we give them any milks, to be honest with you, except human milk. Well, the Bible has said this, if you want to give your baby the milk that you think it has and then you can't nurse it, go find a monkey, go find a baboon or a more friendly boy. Because if you look at our milk charts, you'll see the extreme differences of cows and even goat's milk to the human child. And when you start getting into concentrated proteins and lipids, you're into heavy mucus forming foods. And if you notice, human mother's milk have around 1%, let's call it, protein. Seven, a little over 7% carbohydrates. And I think it was three something, three and a half lipids. You know, I used to have, this was going back in the 70s, but when you take a look at it, foods have ratios of their chemistry, obviously. Chemistry is always, always in ratios, and of course that gives it its color, its flavor, its shape, and all this sort of thing. Of course, that's what chemistry dictates what you see. But there's always a ratio between the carbohydrates, which is your sugars, your carbon, to the lipids, which is your basically your hydrogen and carbon too, and then you've got your, your nitrogen, your amino acids, or your proteins, they call it. So you have a ratio in foods that are from the carbohydrates to the lipids to the protein. So if you look at mother's milk, you've got 7% carbohydrate, which is your sugar, which is your energy, and, and a whole bunch more. Then you've got your lipids, which is the next in line in terms of down, at about three, half of that, about half of that, and then half of that, again, you have your protein. So the protein side of the of mother's milk, human mother's milk, is the least of the three types of foods. It's the least considered. Carbohydrate is the most considered. What foods are carbohydrates? Fruits, berries, melons, and vegetables. But for a human infant, that's why we move to the fruit. Not only frequency is way out there and saying over vegetables, and that's brain and nerve. Of all things, you want your baby to have a good brain and nervous system. We can fix everything else real easy. Brain and nerve takes a little longer. Uh, I've changed my diet about three months ago. Switched to fruit in the morning, the salad at lunch. I like that. Got rid of the dairy and the grains. Very difficult, however. Now remember, though, if it's difficult to get rid of the grains, uh, you might consider fungal problems. Any starts, it's hard to get rid of, like pastas and oatmeal and stuff like that. Um, and, and you might like uh, cheeses or something. That's all fungal foods. So if you have a hard time giving up some of these things, deworm yourself, defungal yourself, and you'll find a big difference. I defungled myself years and years and years ago, and I've never really liked bread ever. I just, bread, cheeses, I've never liked. None, none of the fungal food really turned me on. Oh, maybe chocolate. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, very difficult, however, to go all raw, mainly because of social pressure. And, and I'm telling you guys, I too understand this uh, for different pressure reasons. Uh, social pressure has never gotten me because I don't give a hoot what people think. Uh, I'm here for one reason, and that's you guys. So the the social pressure isn't the thing. You can have your your significant other pressure and you can have your own uh, inability to have self-discipline. You know, a lot of people are not raised with a lot of self-discipline today. In today's world, I see that in kids all the time. And as much as one thinks of that in a higher consciousness way, even in Montessori, you have to have discipline. And if you don't have discipline, your children will grow without self-discipline. I had many ex-friends who felt that uh, conversation to these individuals were better than, you know, any type of spanking or anything like that. The problem with that was no one wanted them to come over because their kids would just take off running through your house, jump on the bed, jump on the couches, and no one disciplined them. And so, and the mother would sit down and talk to them, and then they'd turn around and just ignore and go on. So, <laughs> it's funny how that is. Don't you want to enjoy life a little, is what I hear a lot. Well, here's the thing. God, I love that cold. Cold water. I love cold water. Cools me down. 
some people live in their bellies and you'll see their belly sticking out and that's that's where they live that's where their consciousness is and down here in the elderly you see these men with big barrel guts out there and that's 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 where their head is you know what you will enjoy life on this planet a million times better eating raw than eating cooked. Some people think having a steak, that's that's their pleasure, that's their bait. Don't you want to die happy? Not that way. That's not dying happy because you don't die happy eating that kind of food. You die in pain and suffering, kidney failure. Yeah, yeah, just because for a little bit of taste, you pay a huge price for that. No, I would tell them, you know what? I feel better on my fruits and my berries and my melons. You guys want your dead animal crap? Go right ahead. I feel good on my, I feel light. I can move my body. I'm not stiff. I'm not tight. That's what I like. You know, turn it around. You be the master. You be the individual with the truth and the way shower. You have answers these people need. And remember that. You guys are getting answers the world needs badly. And so, you know, realize that. Don't be too passive because you want to become the all. You want to become all you can be, right? The old army, be all that you can be. <laughs> well, in consciousness, be all you can be. And that's, I mean, it's just... You know, being on this planet is like having your finger in, say, a 120. Just getting up into the next world is jumping up to a 440. So it's just amazing. So these people that think they're, they're happy are eating dead animals and crap and stuff like that's not true. You give me a, a, an organic uh, navel orange uh, uh, a bowl of the best navel oranges on the planet, and I just died and went to heaven. You couldn't give me anything cooked that matches that. Or, or a Valencia Pride mango, which I was going to go pick some and show you. Uh, I got to pick them too because they're starting to split and stuff. And it's like, oh, they're still hard. But uh, that's the first tree I've ever had of a mango. A mango. So uh, I'm sorry, let me get going here. So at night, I go with the flow and eat whatever. Question, what herbs do I best weave into that credit debit diet of mine? Thanks. Well, it depends where you're suffering, Kurt. If, you, if you're not one, you have a lot of genetics and everything's fairly good and you look at your eye and you're not really tipping anywhere lymphatically or anything, well, heck yeah, I'm, you know, who cares? You know, but in time, you'll find yourself wanting to get away from the crap. You know, and when you do that, it's just a blue moon thing and it's okay, big deal. After you do it, the taste, oh, you remember that taste and then it's like, Oh, I wish I'd have never done that. You know, but that's that's that that's the way life is here. And that's what I'm saying that with the children, if we can breed that out of them and have them on raw most of the time, where they don't develop these habits before five, you guys will have tipped the world into a much, much higher level of, of being and performing because the just the very movement of consciousness from cooked to raw foods is a major increase in awareness for this planet. Major. And now a lot of the bodybuilders and the muscle guys and all this stuff are thinking better and thinking about their kidneys and stuff. You know, it's going to change athletics. And, and, and let me tell you, not for the worst, for the extreme better. You're going to see better uh, uh, race times. You're going to see better everything. Because the, the power to the muscles is more when you're clean and on raw than you're trying to pump them with proteins and you get acidic and stiff. So it's just a huge difference. And for you martial artists, which is my passion, uh, uh, the, the, the agility and the quickness and a quietness of, of thought, key, key. So, uh, you always want to thank Kurt Lymphatics. I don't care what. And you guys will keep seeing this as I draw all these cases into the lymphatic system and you see how that relationship is. You know that's the, the system to go after. Uno, number one, oh. 
So you're looking at kidneys, you're looking at the adrenal glands. I would also look at the skin and the thyroid in terms of sweating. You really want to open up the skin as much as you want to open up the kidneys. Okay, so that's really key. So I would have a kidney formula, minimal, if not two, I like two, uh, an adrenal formula. I like a lymphatic formula to start at least, or a lymph node formula, don't matter. <laughs> and I would do a stomach and bowel formula, or the GI broom. And, and, and maybe if you can afford it, one herb for the endocrine glands and take off. Or try to do a couple kits uh, in the kit. If you've never dewormed yourself, let me highly recommend you guys do the first kit. That's all the doors are opening in the first kit. We're, all, we're on everything, but it's a dewormer. And you just don't want to live there thinking you don't have any parasites in you because that's uncool. Because uh, they just go to Discovery Channel, the monsters within you, and take a look at a few of those to show you the, what's going on. Matter of fact, parasitology departments were closing down around the country. I was aware of that, and I was thinking, because we were getting, we, we've always been dewormers, but I, I, I was always, why? Because medical doctors, they just don't. I had a, a, an ER doc tell a client of mine, she's only about a 19 year old uh, uh, single mother living with her mother and dad. And she was kind of an artist and she drew all. She had a pig tape, a human tape. She had hooks, pins. I don't know if she had any rounds, can't remember. She had a whole thing of them. The ER doc thought she was crazy, called a psych doctor in on her. So you can imagine, here's a 19 year old single mom seeing bizarre worms and crap, drawing them. He could have pulled a parasitology book, if they even had one, and uh, look, no, not to be facetious, but <laughs> and take a look, but uh, she had a bunch. And so they kept her at the hospital nine, I think something like eight, nine hours. The parents are freaking, you know, these are parents are freaking and stuff. Now, this is the case of psoriasis. I remember her well. Well, finally she could give them a stool sample. They were wanting a stool sample, and finally she gave them a stool sample. As soon as the stool sample came back, <laughs> the ER doc said, well, there is some unusual stuff here, and uh, we're going to send this out, and uh, discharged her. Can you believe that? All over detoxification and the removal of the unwanted out of the body. And I hope that ER doc got a good lesson in parasites because uh, he made the comment to her family that there was no such thing as parasites in Americans. What? <laughs> That's narcissistic as hell. So uh, that's what I would do, my friend Kurt. Amy Shipman, you are such a good... Oh, thanks, sweetheart. I love you too, honey. I am a 35-year-old woman. Mm. I developed sinus infection ooh, and, and was put on five rounds of antibiotics in seven months. You know, when you guys really know what's up there and you got a lot of mucus clogging you, you want bacteria up there eating the mucus, don't you? If you could get bacteria up in here and get, get them eating on that mucus, some are probably, but you want to get some up there and start eating on that mucus. <laughs> but it's just a proteinish type of stuff, lipid, kind of a lipoprotein type of stuff, basically. So, you know, eat up. But that's the sort of thing, you know, when you're congested like that, you decongest. How simple is that? And these guys compromise their patients by putting on so many antibiotics, they kill the antibiotics in your lymph nodes. Well, that, that's how you break down your cellular waste. That's how you break down these three pH acids, at least up to six. So that's a problem. So I see this a lot in rheumatoid arthritis particularly, but the, the, uh, the Lyme, the lupuses and stuff like that, they saturate them with antibiotics, even though they're not bacterial issues at all. And they saturate them with antibiotics. And it's like, that's, you know, when you start and look at their modality, it becomes almost a joke, no offense. But here, here's antibiotics, and here's pain meds, and here's a few meds. Some are toxic as hell and kill you. 
I mean, look at the antibiotic Cipro. Killed a lot of people. And they still give it out. Like, like nobody's business. Who cares? We'll shove that under the rug. You know, we, this, this is a foul planet in a lot of ways like that. we got to bring the God force in here and show the love and respect and humility for others. We've gotten so cold. We're, all this is happening like that. We're so cold. We're, we ha we're juicing our children with, with battery acid. Uh, uh, you see how important you guys are? <laughs> Real important. Amy, all you beautiful people. I now can't... What's this? I now can't without pain or bloating. I have spinal bifida. Oh, wow. Mild gastroparesis. Ooh, honey. Pernicious anemia. Low TS. Uh -huh. Makes sense, though, don't it? I mean, a spinal bifida case, I don't know what you don't have uh, in the spine that's grown. I had a, uh, get this, get this one. I had a spinal bifida case born without L4 and L5. Now, keep in mind, these are your kidney vertebrae. Born without L4 and L5. Two years on a raw diet, she now has L4 and L5. So, what about that one? So all I can say is that the body re grows and, 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 and redoes itself. You have to obviously be way up there in energetics. When, I, when we're way up there in chemistry and energetics, on the spiritual side, we're way up near the blueprint. We're way up in the original consciousness of your body. We're up in the causal world. And that's where you pull that energy up and you'll start regenerating that tissue in the physical body when you do that. I didn't expect a lot of people to understand that one, but you know, that's why in class I go over the God worlds a little bit and how it's made. And when you start to understand that things are just energy frequencies, all levels of energy frequencies, but all come out of pure consciousness. Your pure consciousness, you only look into and uh, and use your attention to participate in the, the reality of energy and chemistry, the movement thereof in duality. But you're not there. Your attention is in your bodies real strongly. Sometimes it's hard to realize that you're not the human body. You're so in it, so to speak. So the TSH would be easy to understand because why? Thyroid stimulating hormone we're not really looking at a thyroid gland. We want to know, we want to look at the, the gland that produces TSH, don't we? We want to look at the gland that produces TSH. The fact that she has low TSH tells us she has low thyroid. We get that one. Probably in low PTH, which is the parathyroid. So there's her structural issues as well. We also have the pituitary, which is growth issues. And you might want to check her thymus gland out. You know, again, another part of some of this that's going on with her. So I would hit her thymus gland for a little while. So I'm talking to you too, buddy. I'd hit your thymus gland a little bit, Amy. But uh, definitely want to go after that pituitary gland. <clears throat> the pituitary gland and the parathyroid gland. So somewhere on your uh, protocol, this is a, a type of uh, individual that needs to be hooked with a counselor. Or, honey, you need to really get it down. Uh, you know, do the 14-week protocol, but, you know, a counselor can put you on the right protocol for this. Now, again, mild gastroparesis, which is uh, the paralysis of the stomach. We don't like anything this poor soul's got. And she's a 35-year-old female. So we want this individual to regenerate. Her whole body needs to regenerate itself. But you can't regenerate when the glands are down, particularly the master gland. So we're going in. And of course, that's going to tell you that her sinuses and everything else is involved as well. And what else? The transverse colon. So we're going into this this body, and we're going to we're going to hit it. We're going to hit it. We're going to make it turn around. We're going to make it grow. We're going to make it regenerate itself, right? So this is a fruit and berry and melon only level at first. You know you can work there, but you want to get up there at this level. Believe it or not, she's got yeast problems, which is easy to understand. Surgery for endometriosis made me better and then worse. See here again, endometriosis. So this poor soul, she's got her glands are down. Her lymphatic system's down, of course. So there's no regeneration with that because she's too much in the acidic side of life. So to regenerate this case, you want to move her into the base side of chemistry. You're, you know the diet. Well, that's easy. Now let's get into the botanicals. You're going into the kidneys. You're going into the adrenal glands. But 
uh, at about uh, a month and a half, I would say, a time to get deworm yourself, Amy, and everything else, you need to put yourself on the pituitary herbs and hitchhike that with a parathyroid glandular, 50 milligrams, two, uh, uh, I would do two, three times a day, and hitchhike that with the bones formula three, three times a day. Now, as you move your body down about four or five months from now, I would go to the ultimate immune where you've got the antler and the ginsengs. Why am I going there? Tonics, powerful tissue regenerators. Don't forget your tonics. After you clean up, you get all this heat because tonics are hot. So you want to get all the heat out of you, all the acids out of you, and head for your tonics. Because remember the 256-year-old Chinese man. Google him. 256-year-old Chinese man. Read his story. Ginseng tea four or five times a day. Ah, the 30 wives probably helped. <laughs> Or a hundred, I don't know. He had a bunch. Well, this endometriosis doesn't make me very happy there either. So you you got some stuff going on. I'd probably douche if you can. I don't know what type of if you're in a wheelchair, where you are, sweetheart. What type, you know, what level you're at with this. But let me uh, have some good feeling inside of you because I've regenerated a, a, a C3, C4, C5 spinal bifida with incredible results. So. I think that's what you want to look to. Now, I have been diagnosed with Lyme. Okay, so she was diagnosed with endometriosis, Lyme. Any connection? All connections. Lymphatic connections. Her lymphatic system's down, obviously, but her pituitary is down. It's her growth. She didn't grow properly in different places. You want to check the parathyroid. Didn't give her the calcium to grow in places. So there's a lot of things like that you want to take a look at spinal bifida cases. And of course, Lyme, that, that, that's just systemic acidosis. So anybody's got Lyme, lupus, fibromyalgia, systemic acidosis, meaning that your lymphatic system is stagnant head to toe. Well, that just says your kidneys are not filtering, and in some cases you're not sweating, and, and everything's locked in there. Adrenal problems go right with this. There's no question about that. And my right arm gets numb. Well, here's the thing. I was just working on someone in the office there same thing they were going through and you could feel the lymph was backed up you know when your lymph gets backed up and you get too hard here you're going to get numbness on in your hands if you're not careful because that that lymph can get hard as a rock well there's your nervous system too thank god the blood is a little deeper you couldn't cut that off too much but that's the sort of thing you want to work on that lymph system and open it up hot and cold uh, to the back and, and neural lymphatic points on top of that of course your spinal bifida but I'm I don't know. I would go to a chiropractor and definitely check the upper spine. I don't know where you're involved with this at. But be, be rest assured. At a point, you could use green drinks as well. I think the most important thing is get your nervous system turned on. Get everything turned on. Get the glands turned on. Get your kidneys filtering. Get yourself sweating. Get, get everything up in that way. Start getting the bowels cleaned up. Try to get the, 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 the head to drain, the sinus to drain, and then just pile that field on regeneration, honey, and you'll get it. And I want you to be happy that you who knows where you can take your body. And it all depends upon how your gene pool is. What does your eyes look like? If you have strong fibers, nice straight fibers, and you have strong genes, boy, you'd be a case I'd like to watch. Because uh, you guys with strong genes, you guys can regenerate the moon. Amazing stuff, Amy. But you, you get on with this, honey, because I tell you, it's worth going after. But you've got to address this pituitary problem. Definitely, because it, 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 to me it's involved. Sometime along your journey, I would probably go to a thymus and maybe just take uh, one in the morning and one in the evening, a thymus glandular for a, a, just a bottle, half a bottle, just to turn on the thymus gland a little bit. Or you can do your thymus thumping. You know how the gorillas do thymus thumping? Now that's your T-cell production, but remember we talked about the child that died in Miami, a raw food child, and he was very underdeveloped and all that, very not raw, because when you're raw, it, it's the other way. You know, a lot of people don't get this. They think raw, you're little puny and everything. Oh, no, no, not when you're absorbing and everything. Uh-uh, you're muscular and big. Oh, no. Uh, you know, you, these gorillas can get real big, or, uh, and uh, orangutans in particular, on fruit. So could your silverbacks. 
if you put them where they belong. And these zoos, this is again up in Disney World. I, I, I tried to get to this, this, this trainer of them and say, listen, man, give them more fruit. You know, they love it. That's not more sugar. Water's only so wet. Fruit is only so sweet. And again, they're simple sugars. It's not like it's sucrose, dextrose, or maltose. So when people are talking about sweetness, just remember that. It's the uniqueness of the chemistry of the food. And people just, I mean, it's just so pseudo, I don't know, you know, people think we're into pseudoscience and I look at you and go, are you serious? You guys are into pseudo thinking. I don't know where your thinking even comes from. Amazing. But uh, I'll be glad to help you, sweetheart. This is exciting. I want to see you get over this, and especially with spinal bifida, guys. This is not, you know, you're born without parts of the spine, and uh, it's just not, it, it, it's that's not a fun thing for the individual body and the soul using it. But I've had one good case of that that is exciting as all get out. So have fun with this, honey. If you need help, uh, call in and have them get your, your feet walking down the right path there. Hey, Greg. Dr. Morrison, need your help. Feeling like I'm at the end of my road. What's going on, man? Uh, had uh, rhinoplasty. Hmm. Uh... Turbinites uh, were resectioned at time of surgery. Uh, Turbinites never uh, help. Oh, the organ of my nose is not functioning. Oh, really? No mucus or no mucosa? No, they couldn't take your mucosa out, did they? No mucus, chronic dry. Oh, my God. Chronic dryness, dry red eyes. You know, that's all extreme acidosis, Greg. That's all a stream acidosis. You don't want that, okay? Chronic rash on my nose. Yeah, that's lymph system. Nerve damage. Cannot sense air through my nose. And, oh my God. And damned autonomic nervous system. Weak digestion. Fast heart rate beat. Lightheadedness. All post-surgery. Oh, wow. I'm eating 100% organic raw vegan. I'm 14 months post-op. Uh, uh, how do I save my life? Okay. Okay, so remember that in the regeneration of tissue, even post-surgeries or whatever, the body can regenerate its tissues, all right? But remember, the condition of interstitial fluids have to be able to maintain a more base dominance. And the reason is obvious, because you're dumping, cells are dumping their acid byproducts into the interstitial fluid, and so that fluid has to have the ability to have neutralization and an ability to have some fluidity. So these acids and any cells that are damaged in these ways can be moved on to the lymph nodes and then on to the kidneys or skin. So this is vital that that process go on there. So when you get a red nose and everything else, you know, when you go in with surgeries, and we've talked about this before, that the damage to tissue is, is great by a surgeon. They're not, they're not tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> they're cutting right through cells and everything else. So they're destroying tissue to rebuild tissue. But your body has to go now in and rebuild what they did. So got to move yourself to a high diet of fruits, berries, melons, and you could do some green drinks, but from what you're telling me, you got red dry ice and everything. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think you have to hydrate. Give yourself some hydration by getting on these fruits, berries, and melons. Again, maybe a couple of green drinks now and then. Get your kidneys filtered. Go after your adrenal glands. That's your steroids. That's your power to come up there and help you. You get the steroids up. You want to get your parathyroid up, don't you? That's your skeletal system. You have deformities. You had a nose you didn't like or whatever because we're into genetics. But you want to take a look at the parathyroid and the augmentation of the skeletal system. So you want to go to the parathyroid gland and take a look at that. Now you can look at that in your eye or you can take a look at that as symptoms like bruising easy, depression, uh, loose skin, uh, veins of varicose or spider, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Heart arrhythmias can be uh, low calcium uh, 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 utilization, things like that. Uh, you know, you want to check all these things out that we talk about and then start getting into that, re you know, start moving on with that. Um, the bones formula, very regenerative. So at one time you want to couple that with the uh, parathyroid gland. We talked about in that last case where you could couple, say, uh, 50 milligram parathyroids two, uh, three times a day. Couple that with a bones formula three, three times a day for, I would say, for a good month. 
uh, but the true regeneration is in the chemistry you're consuming that, that and, and moving that and hydrating and moving that but all that dryness I would probably get my eye formula get an eye cup if you can't we sell these little plastic eye cups makes it real handy about 12 drops skin temperature water twice a day you're going to just saturate your eye really good with that that'll start promoting uh, brain and nerve flow another thing that I would do is upper circulation I would definitely do upper circulation. Start, as a matter of fact, if you got the money, do upper and lower circulation. Start getting blood flowing all through these tissues of the face. You know, really getting all this uh, this thing going. As you up here in this high regenerative levels, um, that's when you see big changes. And it has to be 100% raw. You can't expect changes when you're down in the lower echelons of energy. That's when you can't even raise your head. How are you going to regenerate tissue at that? Your cells can barely think. So that's how I go after that, Greg, for sure. And uh, you, it might not hurt for you to do brain and nerve number two simultaneously, because I'm sure, like you said, the olfactories you can't smell anymore and everything else. You should be able to get those back. Upper circuit brain and nerve would be two real good ones, I would think, for you on that level. Going after cell regeneration, of course, is going to be looking at the ability to remove the acids out of those areas. But it sounds like you weren't able, and, and this is part of the problem. I want you guys to realize that there's differences between, let's say, uh, Craig went down, and let's say Robert went both down for rhinoplasty. Right? But let's say that Robert had a fairly good moving lymph system, and Craig here obviously does not. Who's going to have the worst time of, of the two? Craig. Because he, he can't move the, the damage that they created. Remember, they're creating damage in, 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 in the way they build. It's like when I build a house, I'm going to have pieces of, of two by fours, two by sixes. I'm going to have scrap all over the outside of the house until I'm done. And they have a lot of scrap that they can't all just clean out. And so that's the job of the lymphatic system. And you, not the job of your blood. Your blood's bringing the boys to come help. The lymphatic systems help cleaning up the job site. So that, that's, that's what you've got going on. And this really shows that in all the other experiences you're seeing because that surgery can be a tripping mechanism to your adrenal glands to show you what's really going on. You know, sometimes a trauma like this to the adrenal glands or to the body can wake you up to what's really going on here. I tell you, Greg, there's one really good way to look at this uh, is get a picture of your eyes and take a look at your head area. That's going to be on the right eye, you know, look at 12 o'clock to 3, and the left eye the opposite, say 9 up to 12. And take a look at that head area. But you want to look at your whole body, see the condition you're in. But I can tell you, you want to go after that lymphatic system, because as long as you stay acidic here, you could even break down that which they did. Because acids will never let things heal. So things will collapse on you and everything else. You want to strengthen and regenerate. Well, you've got to move this condition into a base dominant condition, not an acid dominant condition. You want to make sure you have adrenal steroids. That, that's all anti-inflammatories and healers as well, right? So you want your adrenals up. You want that power of calcium for tissue, connective tissue strength and stuff. So you need the parathyroid working. You need growth hormones to assist in that factor uh, from the pituitary. So this is why you make the body healthy when you're after regeneration regeneration. It's more than just eating a few things, taking a few supplements. That doesn't get anybody regeneration. You're at the level to get regeneration. You want to get up there on that raw and that frequency and in that consciousness. And then the body just starts to regenerate itself. It's amazing. But that's what I would do. Well, let me see, guys. This is a fairly long one. Let me see. Get through this. Um, I just recently found your YouTube videos and appreciate all your hard work and sharing. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate it. Welcome aboard. Uh, I'm wondering if you could give the, uh, me some advice uh, as there are multiple things going on. Well, let's take a look at this individual here. <coughs> Excuse me. Over 10 years ago, I had my gallbladder removed. It was not working anymore. So, immediately you know that her lymphatic system in her GI tract is a mess. You know, when you, when you start having things like this and getting stones and stuff like this, your, your lymphatic system is backing up in these tissues and you've got to do something about it. I always had a sensitive 
stomach but since then it has got worse over the years where everything goes through me and I'm wondering which of your products to take otherwise I'm taking Emodium well part of the problem is the removal and it's obvious the removal of an organ or gland doesn't fix anything it just compromises things and makes things worse and of course when you're dealing in the lipid uh, digestion that's your gallbladder so those of you that have your gallbladder removed, those you already know, those foods higher in lipids are not going to be something they are going to give you constant diarrhea. So you have to move to the fruits, berries, and melons, and the vegetables anyway, because most of the other foods are not going to make you happy. And of course, they're going to continue to make everything go down because you're not do, you didn't do anything to fix this problem. And so we need to fix this problem. Well, immediately you know that when you see tissue going down, gallbladders, appendixes, wherever, you know the lymphatic system is the instigator. The blood isn't the instigator to break things down, and there's only two, two major fluids of the human body. So uh, easy to understand, right? You don't need to go to college for that. You got a kitchen, you got a bathroom. All houses have kitchen and bathrooms, and this is your physical house while you're on this lovely planet called Earth, right? So in houses, you have to have kitchens and you have to have bathrooms because all its residences, cells, residences, have to eat and poop. That simple. You don't need to go 10 years to college to get all that and pay all that money. So when you eat foods that are uh, not on the proper side of chemistry, you soot up the body like burning dirty fuel. Remember those old diesel trucks that are high sulfur and you push on them, you saw that black smoke roaring out of it? Mm -hmm. Burning dirty fuel. And that's what burning proteins are. It's burning dirty fuel. Can't do that because now you're, but the problem with the dirty fuel is, just like the sulfurs, it's acidic and it acidifies the atmosphere. Well, in your body, it acidifies the atmosphere around the cells. And that atmosphere around the cells are called interstitial spaces. So, you need to get on this. And if you're moving your bowels too much, I'd get on our new zero. We have stomach and bowel zero. And that's what I made that one for, to slow you up. And don't take that one if you're constipated, because you're not going to like it. But it's to slow you up from moving too much. You know, because if you're moving too much, you ain't absorbing nothing. Right? And, and to tell you the honest truth, when you have your gallbladder removed, you know the lymphatic system is involved, you probably have an X amount of malabsorption going on as well. So you're just going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. And because no one told you that their diets were causing this, you didn't change anything. You know, when, you, when, when people deny the very consumption of chemistry is not, as, is not the problem, I don't know where they live from, where they came from. When a medical doctor says there's nothing that you're eating that's causing these problems. Now, if they say there's nothing you're eating that can cause these diseases, they're absolutely right. No pun intended, but those are made up conditions. These are all fabricated names. These are medical doctors' names for, for symptomologies and, 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 and shuffled into kind of some kind of disease mechanism which has made them look stupid and of course they can't figure it out either and of course no one else can either so it disempowers everybody including them except for the narcissism because when you when you think you know more than others and you can control all that it breeds narcissism sad stuff but it's enough to say that you want to get honking on your lymphatic system because in your gut wall that your 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 stomach wall and your small bowel wall. I I don't know. You'd have to pick take a picture of your eyes. But my guess is, knowing eyes and people like I do, you probably have a big case of malabsorption. Well, you don't fix these things. See, this is the this is their medical cancer side too. You know, when your lymph system's down, just pick any any disease that they've named. That's the system involved. especially on all the autoimmune things. Next thing that happened was my lower leg started swelling along with foot and leg cramps. Okay, so right off you know you're in kidney failure. Right off. But you already were because that's why you lost your gallbladder. I mean, you guys are the, are the premier people because you know something that the rest of this world don't. And that is the kidney connection to the lymphatic system. Nobody in this world focuses on that but you guys so good stuff but right there her legs are swelling down there she's not filtering of course and of course she wasn't filtering because there went her gallbladder and of course she probably has malabsorption getting thinner and thinner and thinner foods are going right through her and let me say that right across the street 
is the pancreas and that's where you digest most of your foods uh, even your polypeptides to the aminos you know between the pan pancreatic duct and the pancreas baby that's your baby so uh, that can be involved too because remember when you're your, your, your GI tract, just consider your GI tract a tree. Your gallbladder and liver is a, tr is a branch off of that tree. Your pancreas is a branch off of that tree. The spleen is a branch. These are branches. And when the branches are involved, so is the trunk of the tree. Matter of fact, the trunk of the tree goes first and then the branches. So, you know, you're involved in there and you just have to realize that. The swelling and cramping, of course, is acidosis. So it shows you that you're stressing your myelin sheath. So you probably have low anyway with low adrenals. There goes your myelin sheath. And then the more acidic you get, the more cramping and spasticity you get. And then you can get into, of course, seizures and all that kind of crap. And it's like, oh, my God. So, you know, a couple things here. And, of course, with the, with the cramping and everything, you want to double-check your parathyroid. It never hurts just to go on a month of parathyroid hooked with the bones formula anyway. It doesn't, you can't hurt them. You just make super bones, super bones and super connective tissue. Everybody could get along with that. The swelling started a couple of years ago and I felt it was my kid felt it was my kidneys too. Uh, did you just hear me? Uh, or actually my adrenals because for the last well probably both, uh, last many years I've been under a lot of stress, yeah, and, and can feel pain in my kidney areas, yep, yep, along with the tightening feeling in the liver and spleen areas, yep, yep, yep. See that's what's going on. You're feeling exactly, sweetheart, what's going is this a, a male or a female? Better be careful. Female, Deborah. Deborah, honey. You're feeling exactly what's going on here. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, you said it right there. I'll be right there. Yeah, good, good, good. Ooh, good, good, good. There's the doctor of the future right there. Right there. My grandson. You've seen him before on a video. He's a blonde, real cute kid that wore my glasses. Cute kid. Was raised a fruititarian, but not so much now. It's hard, you know, in school and kids and everything else. That's why I'm saying you moms and dads do your best. Because the school just taints the people. It doesn't make them better, taints them. And then makes them mongoloids on, on, on academics. And then they can't, they, they can't get out of that. You know, they're trapped in thoughts and ideas and theories. And we need to, we need to take Montessori teaching and and send it up the roof into a much more spiritual level of understanding. We can have a superior race on this planet. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. All right, so you're feeling the tightening and the swelling of your liver, your spleen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, honey, you got to jump into this and get your lymph moving because, you know, you're burning yourself right now. Your cells are burning and stuff like this. And, you know, you want to be real careful with all of this stuff. I've been to doctors and brought this up, but nobody seems to be concerned about the adrenals. <laughs> well, you can't go to medical, too many medical doctors that are concerned about anything. No offense, I've got some friends that are real nice and good, but as a rule, you know, this, this isn't their field. Should be, because isn't the adrenal glands uh, something in the human body? In the last few years, I, I also gained 50 pounds. Ooh, well, it sounds like your adrenals did go down. And so your sugar metabolism went down. Better check your blood sugar once in a while, too, because uh, when that starts to happen, you're not metabolizing sugars properly. That's your cortisol levels. And another thing can happen when the cortisol levels go down. Oh, I want to I wanna show my... I, 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 what? 8.6. 8.6. This is this is a new teacup multi poo. <laughs> All right. This is a new teacup multi poo. And uh, hey, mocha. A Not a tea mocha. What happened? You mocha. didn't become a teacup. 8.6. 8.6 pounds. Mookie. Mookie, you're not a teacup anymore, yeah. sweetheart. Yeah. Tell, tell everybody hello. I'm Moki. I'm Moki, the little four-month-old uh, multi poodle, a cross between a Maltese and a poodle. Multi poodle. Oh, I can't believe how you that much. Mocha. Mocha. All right. Good See you guys. Bye. All right. 
uh, in the next few years, I also gained 50 pounds in most of my life. I was thin. Aha! Uh -huh. See, you can get this. You can be heavy and be malabsorbed. See, and that's the worst of both worlds. Because all the extra weight on you distresses everything more. It is better to be thin and be malabsorbed than to be fat and malabsorbed. Because now you stress everything. And you're just running on time, you know. And so mostly running on sugars. Uh, let me see here. All sorts of diets recently, but it was not uh, coming off which most of my life. It was easy to lose weight. I've also been extremely tired and fatigued. I'm back to your adrenals and gland. So your, everything in this paragraph is about your adrenal glands. The gaining of weight, the fatigue, that sort of thing. That's about your adrenal glands going down more and more and more. And um, of course you said you've been under stress and things like that. And then she started feeling really sick and found out I had a goiter and my thyroid had a bunch of nodules and is borderline Hashimoto's. Also have strange sleep cycles where I can't fall asleep at night. Do we need to help this lady? Absolutely. And what's going on? All right. So let's look at this. Goiter. What systems down? Lymphatic. Nodules in the thyroid. What systems down? Lymphatic. See how we can just go to this system almost each and every time? Absolutely. Uh... Let me see what else. How about can't go to sleep at night? Insomnia. So here's your thyroids, right? Where's your pineal gland? Right in there, right there, right back. All right, so third eye tisratil. Pineal gland's down. Oh, oh, now, if your pineal gland's down, it's highly suggestive of chronic sinus. Highly suggestive of a transverse bowel problem, and highly suggestive that your pituitary is down with it. I mean, I've done so many eyes, tens and tens of thousands of eyes in my life, that this is just what I see all, each and every time. So, you really got to get after the kidneys and adrenals. That's obvious. You even know it yourself. So, you know where you got to go there. But, you really want to get after your GI tract and start getting up in this head area and start trying to get everything draining. So fruits, berries, and melons only because you're going to get yourself in trouble here, honey. You already are. You know that already. The next thing is just going to be popping tumors now because now, well, you are already. You're starting to get a tumor right here as a goiter. Uh, you can throw any label on it you want. Hashimoto's, uh, Robert Soto's, uh, who cares? Uh, you've got a lymphatic system down and you are getting in trouble. So not difficult to get rid of the goiter and the nodules and stuff like that, but you really got to get that lymph system opened up and your GI tract cleaned up and get the sinuses cleaned because you want to get up in here. And now we're talking about pineal and pituitary. Pineal, you can take a pineal glandular and take it uh, one or two uh, capsules one or two hours before sleep. That pineal glandular. Now, you want to get up here in upper cirque, brain and nerve. You want to work on the GI tract. Uh, if your pituitary is down, you just got to go on. Let's see what else she's got going on here. I had a biopsy on thyroid, which, you know, why do they have to cut on it? I mean, you don't have to cut on tissue. We already know what causes the nodules. Who cares if there's a cancer cell in there, right? Who cares? You got to do the same thing for a benign as a can if there's cancer cells. The cancer cells ain't going nowhere in a tumor, are they? There's nowhere to go in a tumor as a cancer cell. You're in a closed house. So what's the big deal anyway? You see, why compromise your patient? Because they know once they do a biopsy and they open up all that acid sludge, they're in trouble. But oh, they just got it. I don't know what it is. Uh, you don't have to look at these things. We already know what it is. You don't have to touch it. We know what it is. Hmm. I find it now it's been about five weeks, I believe, that I've been on uh, methylmycel, five milligram twice a day, and we'll go back to Dr. in July to test my butt on that medicine. I think you need to change your whole way of thinking here, because none of these guys can help you with any of these things. You know that. Well, they can help you with the goiter. Take your thyroid out. Take your thyroid out, you'll be one of the most unhappiest people around. Nobody's happy without thyroids and parathyroid glands. 
and life's miserable. It's much worse than having a gallbladder removed. I was drinking a lot of fermented drinks. Look at this. She was drinking a lot of fermented drinks and some veggies and taking probiotics trying to heal my stomach as besides fatigue, my stomach is in the worst thing for me. You know, I told you guys, you can't do these things. And why get into fermentation? You're getting into more acidosis again. You know, you can't. As you move toward the vinegars, you're moving toward the acids again. Your, your life is now complete at that level. It's given its all. Now it's time to go home basically, or get rearranged, and that's, that's what's going on. Why, why do you, we people feel like you have to eat uh, dying foods? There's just something about eating dying and dead foods that humans get off on, and I don't get what that is, because it's all nasty to me. You want power, you want excitement, you want energy, you want happiness, you want joy, you want life. Life begets life. Death, cooking, begets death. So, you know, she was taking digestive probiotics, of course, you know, and stuff like this. And you just can't do those things. You know, we have a world of, I got to treat. I just got to treat. I can make money if I treat. Uh, I also had a couple uh, uh, bladder infections over the last six months and was on an antibiotic and then got a yeast infection, of course. Uh, they gave me a SIBO test for my stomach and that came out negative along with a colonoscopy last year, which was fine. Because when you do a colonoscopy, my dear one, you're taking a camera up a garden hose. Now, if you have a fault within the wall of the garden hose, you'll never see it going up the hose with the camera because it's in the wall or you got a balloon bubble on the outside of the wall. If you have a balloon bubble inside the wall, like a polyp, you can see that. But what is it when you see a polyp hanging down from a bow wall? What system do you think that represents? The lymphatic system. That's your beginnings of tumors and things. And they can be on the outside as much as they can be on the inside. So a colonoscopy is just more stressful. Uh, when people realize they can just take off, detox their bodies, clean their bodies up. But if, for, for inquiring minds, you know, but you got to be careful with colonoscopies. They can hurt you. There's been a lot of cases of perforated bowels and stuff like this. So you got to be careful. I was drinking, okay, uh, I'm supposed to get, go get my veins done. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm supposed to go, you know, it's funny, some people, and not to peg you wrong, Deborah, but some people just live in the medical world as if it's the savior of all saviors. I'm just going to go get my veins done today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go have this uh, goiter taken off. Of course, that's my thyroid. That sort of thing. Not to be facetious, Deborah, but you've got to start turning your thinking around a little bit and saving your body because you live in it for now and you want to save it. And what you're doing now is having things done that can only hurt you, create uh, blood clots and things like this. I wouldn't have them touch my leg. So if you have venous problems, what's your problem? And where does this take us, guys? It's taking us right back up here to the parathyroid gland again. She's got connective tissue problems. So they're going to strip her veins? What? <laughs> easy, easy to fix spider or varicose veins. Easy. <sighs> but you're going after the parathyroid gland. But look, you're all involved up here. You're involved with the pituitary. You're involved with the parathyroid. You know what it sounds like to me, dear one, that you need to hook to a counselor. Uh, I'm serious. Some of you, I feel confident you can go and knock it off yourself, but... You know, Deborah, you might need to get a counselor to get your feet set on the path properly and get uh, going through this because uh, you need to make a, a 180 change in your life and, and start saving your body parts and not putting your life in danger because it's easy to say, I'm going to get my veins stripped, but you can have blood clots, you can have all kinds of problems, and that doesn't fix the problem. Never does, never did. You see what I'm getting at here? So uh, you, you definitely want to fix that, but you want to go too because this is aneurysms and herniation. So you want to go to the parathyroid. But, but, see, and not to be confusing because when you're new to this site, you, you miss a lot about the, the pituitary relationship to the parathyroid and that you have to take a look at that. And with everything you're saying here, I can tell you that I, I, can, I can just about lay you a $100 bill out there. You've got it. 
pituitary's down, your pineal's down, your, 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 that's giving you the insomnia, your, your pituitary's shutting down the other two, shutting down your thyroid, and shutting down your um, um, uh, parathyroid gland, definitely your parathyroid gland. It could be hyperstimulating your thyroid, who cares, who knows. That, that's a, but this is all lymphatic stuff, goiter and all, all your, uh, all your um, nodules and stuff. You will, you're going to lose your thyroid if you don't get this out of there, and it's not difficult to get out of there. You get focused, but you got to get into the bowels to get up here. You got to get your sinuses drained. I'd candle my ears. I'd start opening up all my doors, getting myself to sweat, getting my kidneys to filter. Very key, get your adrenals up, and I laid out protocols for you to do these things on the protocol video. Too much to repeat protocols for everybody on here. Then I don't get a chance to talk about other people's problems. And now she has seasonal allergy. So again, more confirmation of the lymphatic system. I found your vids and instinctively felt that you were right on target. And I've noticed I stayed away from fruits because of high carbs. Not high carbs. Grains are high high starch. Starch is what you want. Carbohydrates. People, you know, a lot of people have been taught that carbs are bad. Carbohydrates are are your uh, are your are your carbons? They're essen They're the number one essentiality of all foods is carbon, over amino acids, over lipids. Remember, we just talked about that. Very essential. All the foods for the herbivores, the omnivores, uh, uh, at least most of the omnivores and the frugivores, all have to have a a carbohydrate dominance. When you complex a fruit sugar or a vegetable sugar or you add those two together a glucose and a fructose now you're getting into your diet two or poly meaning many saccharides which is what a sugar is so that's all it is nothing to get uh, upset about but a lot of people steer away from fruits with bad advice and you don't want to steer away from the food for humans and you'll see after gaining i did not want to gain more Gain weight with fruits, that's how you take weight off, honey. You gain weight on starches, which is your grains. That's how you put on a ton of weight. Yep, I'm amazed how people have these things turned around out there. It's amazing. And so I noticed having more pain in my kidneys when staying away from fruit and always feeling thirsty like I was dehydrated. Exactly what you are. I mean, you're feeling and you're knowing. I have a sense you know what's going on with you because the way you express this, you, you know your kidneys are down, you can feel them, you got kidney pains, you know you're dehydrated, you're too acidic. So, you, you, you know, you got a good handle on that part. So, I know that is a lot and I started with fruit and also have a salad today but I put in cucumbers, yellow tomatoes, lettuce and some pieces of flax. I was putting in apples but I caught a video where you said yeah don't mix veggies and fruits. Uh, I am juicing fruit only now along with drinking lemon lime water and also coconut. Now that's where I like right now. I think you're doing good right now. Get rid of the salad here as you move up and get aggressive. Get a picture of your eyes and, and go over that so you get used to taking a look at yourself and see what you're up against but you're up against some things here. I can tell you right off. I just got a pretty good idea what your eyes look like. So you really want to you really want to go after this because you've got things going on up here and that that are serious stuff. No question. Um, also, I hope olives are okay to snack on. Yeah, they also are, are they are a fruit. Yeah, I think they're a little stronger in proteins, but that's okay. Uh, is it okay to squeeze my salad with lemon or orange uh, juice fresh? Or, yeah. I better than putting other dressings on there. Absolutely. But I'd like to see you get away from salads for a while because you're gonna you're gonna feel you're gonna get better and better to a point and then you'll plateau and you'll feel like you can't get any better. And so that's what you really want to get up out of there on the fruits, berries, and melons. They they're the drivers. They dig in, they go. And that, that would help you out much more. Would be interested in what veggies you feel are good, but I hear you say on your videos, we got work to do. Absolutely. And I don't use veggies to get any work done whatsoever. They're cheat foods because they're so hard to digest, you know. And just think about chewing on a piece of kale and yet maybe biting into a beautiful ripe uh, mango. And just the, the huge difference for us. Uh, a horse don't mind eating a, a kale. Because they grind their 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 lettuce, they grind their cellulose. We don't grind. 
uh, you've got, uh, but I am not sure specifically what to do. For instance, I understand you prefer fruit, and also you have some products that are helpful. Absolutely, got a lot of products that are helpful. The store, I mean, the club does. Uh, please direct me to which uh, products I would go to the uh, video on protocols, honey. That was about four videos or back, I think now, or five, I don't know. But uh, go back to that protocol, or in your case, you might want to talk to a counselor for a couple of months and let them get you on the right path, and then you feel confident on your own and go off on your own. Uh, that's what I would say, uh, Deborah. And thank you very much, my dear one, for writing me all this. But you've got some problems you want to deal with here. But you see how she's so involved here? And now she has multiple glands down here. This is this is where you don't want problems, of course. And so she's got to get up in here and get all this out of here. When you get stagnant up in here, you want a candle, you want a hot and cold, you're neurolymphatic. You want to try to get hydration as fast as you can. So obviously you want base dominant foods, which is your fruits, berries, and melons. They're astringent, so they have some pulling action, very quick hydrators, very little digestive energy needed. So everything is win-win win 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 given the fact that nature will dry or water fast you and if you if you push it that far so good questions everybody good questions love your questions <laughs> thank Esther Esther said, Dear Dr. Morris, my ray of sunshine. Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate that. I can get a little quirky, Esther. But, um, you know, when you spend, this was what, my 45th, 44th, 45th, 46th year doing this, I, I started in 1971. So, uh, uh, I've just seen a lot of things. You know, I'm working with humans and both on the spiritual side and the health side. I worked more on the spiritual side for years than the health side because I couldn't make a living uh, trying to help people. It's hard to get people to understand this level of work. And people would always uh, not understand fruits and stuff like that. And it wasn't until we broke through some very VIPs that we really started exploding, you know. Um, a lot of rock and rollers got a hold of us and stuff like that and it just really helped us a lot then and they started getting their remedies and started well what's going on here you know so a little at a time Fox News would come in ABC News would film either the state would come after me or we'd have a sensational case that makes the newspapers or something and then it gets on Fox News and then I crap, get crap for it but then we get busy and so, so it just built through the years like that and then when I started doing the YouTubes, um, which Dan tried to get me to do them for a couple of years before I started them, actually, Dan McDonald. He's a good friend, a student of mine, and it was like such a good guy, you know, and I, I, he kept pushing me to do, I said, I'm an old guy, I don't really want to do YouTubes, you know, but then uh, I started doing them. It took, a, it took a, one of the, um, the ladies on, I think she's on Fox or CNN, and she was talking about how chemotherapy cures 85% of the cancers, and I just lost it. I said, I'm going to do the videos, and my first video was on that one. Jane Velez Mitchell, that was who it was, Jane Velez Mitchell, and I just, I just, I, I I, I couldn't I couldn't bite my tongue any longer because <laughs> you just can't lie to the people anymore. You can't. You, we're hurting as a human race here, and you can't enough lies, enough corruption. It just can't keep going, and that's why we're here. And we're gonna. It's you know when you rub up against the God force, it gonna expose things, and things are getting exposed all over the place. So it's good stuff. Well, Esther, I love you, my dear. I thank you for that. You are a gift from the universe to this crazy world. Thank you, sweetie. It is a crazy world right now. And I'm telling you, man, if these guys don't stabilize, hopefully we can stabilize this world before it gets too too far. Because at a certain point, that has to come back and the pendulum swings the other way. <laughs> and if all of us in our love and power and energy and help uh, should be able to stop that pendulum from getting too negative, I would think. But what do I know? I love watching your videos and I ordered your book, but now I have a question about my skin autoimmune dermatitis called granuloma annular. Something like that. Healthy white blood cell attack each other. 
Wait, they don't like each other? What's going on there? You know, uh, I hear a lot of their stuff like that. The body's attacking itself. They're going crazy. It's an autoimmune. But you know immediately you're highly involved in lymphatic uh, constipation. Uh, so whenever you see that, you might want to take a look at your thyroid, do your basal temperatures under your arm, because you want to at least be 97.5 up to 98 to have a good sweat. And if you're still not having a good sweat, come to Florida. The humidity is about 100, <laughs> and you can just walk out and sweat. But that's what you want. You want to open up that door of sweating. Now, this could look worse when you're doing this, of course. Uh, to help that with relief would be saltwater baths, chickweed baths. Uh, there is uh, a lot of creams for that sort of thing, but you want to be careful with creams because, again, you're, you're backed up uh, subcutaneously, and you don't want to add more in the mix. Now, something maybe like a, um, a, a grape seed extract. A grapeseed oil, uh, very nutritive, and so that tends to go right down into the cells or around the cells and nourish that. It's more anti-inflammatory, so you might want to do the grapeseed oil on that. You know, I would definitely use the grapeseed above uh, any of the other oils, like olive and stuff. But your real issue is to open the kidneys. So pee in a jar, take a look at your urine. You don't see sediment, and you have clear urine. You're not filtering. There's your answer. But but the subcutaneous areas of the skin, you have to ask yourself, do you have enough body heat to, to, to create a sweat? So you want to look at that. Kidneys can be down, but when the kidneys go down, your body kicks up oversweating. So those people that oversweat, it's a sure sign that your kidneys aren't filtering very good at all. But when your thyroid is down and you can't get enough temperature to sweat, then both or all three of the eliminative organs of metabolic waste are down. You're in trouble. And it's just, it's just a fast road to lupus, limes, fibromyalgia, and all the other stuff that you see because you're systemically getting backed up now. And uh, just take it like the New York garbage uh, strike. No one's picking up the garbage. And it's acidic. And nobody's happy inside. <laughs> so this is uh, opening this up. Uh, you don't want to buy the fact that your white blood cells are attacking each other crap and stuff like that. I suffer from that since a young age. So you were born with kidney weakness and adrenal gland weaknesses. So you want to take a look at that and fix these. Get a picture of your eyes. Take a look at your skin. Your skin on the outside of that. You could have a weakness plus uh, lymphatic uh, 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 constipation there. And after all these years, you're breaking down your skin cells. Yeah. So you want to open up these doors. You know, just open up these doors. Uh, Koshi treatment, I don't know. Probably not. But if you do some salt baths and you, uh, you get your body temperature up there by getting your thyroid up, you'll, you'll sweat well and open that up. But kidneys, 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 kidneys. I suffer from that uh, since young age. I'm 46 now, and actually I have another big breakout of these ugly reddish ring forming spots on my underarm. Here's another thing I would do. I would deworm myself. And I would deworm myself uh, for a couple of months. And uh, with that, I would also defungal myself. So that would be Parasite G, about four capsules, three, four times a day, and Parasite M, about four capsules, the same thing, or in the tincture, a dropper and a half, three or four times a day. And at the same time, I'm detoxifying my body. I'm not going to put any more fermented foods in there because you have plenty of fungus as it is. So you don't want to add to that problem. That's another problem with fungal foods or with uh, fermented foods. It breeds fungus. And then everybody bitches about having too much candida, but then they're eating fungal foods because now they're eating fermented foods. You see, you see this trap that people are getting into? So you definitely want to defungal yourself. I can tell you that right off. Sometimes I have them for two to three years before they disappear. You just got to detox your lymphatic system, but I deworm and fungal myself too. Sometimes I, uh, okay, uh, vitamin E applications helped in the past. No, 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 no. Don't even think about trying to treat this. You should think about trying to treat it. You'll have it the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, when, when, when we're talking lymphatic, nothing good ever comes of that system down. Nothing. And pain is one of the representations of that system down that uh, could kill you.
because then you have to go into some of these uh, narcotics and stuff like that. But now it doesn't seem to work anymore. I eat plant-based for more than one year, mostly raw and along to your advice. Lots of fruits, berries, and melons. I would do fruits and berries only. As a matter of fact, I put myself on a 20-day grape fast. Heck yeah, why not? 20 days, grapes. I mean, really go after your lymphatic system, sweetheart. Make sure your kidneys are filtering big time. You want to go after this very, very importantly, sweetheart. You've suffered long enough. Time to get this done. You've been to the wrong people. No one's ever guided you away. Get this karma done and you'll be free the rest of your life, sweetheart, and a happy woman. And you'll fix some of the things that kill you. Because as you get older, with the kidneys down, you're talking about congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, all the things like that. I also suffer from a uterus, uterine fibroid and weak adrenal glands. Well, the weak adrenal glands is obvious. Okay, so to get the fibroid out, it's the same thing. It's a lymphatic issue. So to get the fibroid out, to get a hardness out, you got to get your kidneys filtering. And this is definitely the kidneys now. So you want to get the kidneys filtering and your adrenals up. Well, to get the kidneys filtering, you've got to get your adrenals up. So you always work on those two together since they're twins. One sits on the top of another one, like a kangaroo and their little baby, except the kangaroo baby's up here. That's what I'd be doing. Uh, what herbs and formulas go to my protocol? That's all I can tell you. Go to the protocol because it's going to save you a lot of time. Because I get into the kidneys, the adrenals, the bowels. This is how I work. That's how I highly recommend it. And you're 46. I wouldn't mess around anymore. You've had these acids in your body long enough and there could have been damage for this. You want to get this fibroid out of the uterus and make sure you're not fibrocystic in the breast. Those have got to go. Make sure you don't have ovarian cysts coming and going. And it's all about getting your kidneys to filter and getting your lymph system hydrated and moving. Okay. Uh, lots of love and thank you so much. And thank you so much, Esther. A great woman you are, my dear. But you up, okay? Because uh, you don't dilly-dally when you have serious acid problems like this. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kate. Hi, Katie. I am a uh, International School of Detoxification Level 1 practitioner. I am also a registered nurse. Know who you are, honey. I know who you are. I share your message of love, vitality, and healing with all my patients in the hospital and my clients in my detox holistic healing practice. This, is, this, this lady is one butt-kicking woman. You hear that? Not only is she a nurse in a hospital, she's got her own practice. She's just this incredible woman. I'm interested in opening a detoxification healing center. Excellent, and you should. I really love nurses. And I really think th this is a perfect shoe-in for an RN, even an LPN, guys. This is a perfect shoe-in for you to open yourself up a detoxification center, a healing center. And your reputation is going to take off because now, instead of treating symptoms, you get to cure your clients. And you don't, you can get out of that whole fantasy world of diseases and get into the real world of chemistry and physics and understand the body, how it really works. And you'll go, I get it. This is great because I have, I have worked with a lot of nurses and I'm telling you, you guys are, are special to me and, and that's a good field. Mm. I heard you say in a previous video that you know someone who is setting these clinics up and I want to get in on this. Thank you for sharing the truth. You listen, definitely, definitely, Kate. Uh, this this individual, I'm hoping, you know, I, we've had so many things come to us. Very few things pan out. People promise the moon and only give a, a stick. But that's okay. We're, we're, we're doing it. We're, it's fine. We're all giving and, and it's working how God wants it to go. But if this lady does work out, we're talking about the first naturopathic hospital slash healing center. Now you're going to see a beast of a whole different color. You're going to see people walking out robust and healthy. You're going to see a healing center like none other. A place where you can go and get help from all modalities. Uh, I mean, just the world has never seen what a true healing center can be. <laughs> and research and everything. So, you know, it, again, you know, it takes those with the cash. But 
If not, we're doing it. We're doing it one at a time. We're doing it with our love. We're doing it, guys. And I love you guys for it. We're helping the world here. And Kate, you're on. You are on. Did you get your herbal degree? Oh, look at this. Hi, Dr. Morris. I have been a raw foodist mostly for about eight years. Great, man. I, that's, that's about how I lasted, eight to ten years. I think I think I lasted, maybe I lasted ten to fifteen. I don't know. I had my ups and downs. My health, because I was pumping, I was pumping out of body travel. I was, I was pumping the God stuff. The health stuff to me was easy. And then, of course, after I was so excited, my friends thought I was nuts. Then I thought, well, I'll just go to the spiritual side. <laughs> Uh, my, my health concerns were not uh, going completely away. I stumbled across your YouTube videos and I must say that I really uh, feel your information is a missing link that I will fill all the holes that were open. It should because this is, uh, this is what I, I'm good at is filling the holes. I'm good at, they send me here to take the complex and make it the simple. That's what I do. I take things that are complex and, and I've got to learn all of that and then I take it and make it simple. And that's the way it's supposed to be. People, that's, that's intellectual narcissism, and we don't need that here. We need to take the complex and simplify it. And that's just what I've tried to do. Take the complex, get rid of the theories that have no, no, no basis in facts or, or basis of even working, and get rid of those things. Absolutely, man. Good to meet you, though. Um, I have even gotten my husband and children on board and we are now eating fruits, berries, and melons. Oh, this is a good woman here. Have a good woman, your husband. Let me say to your husband, be thankful you got a good woman like this one here. They don't come all the time like this. Look at this. This, this. She's a good mother. She's getting her children. Got to get them healthy. She's going after her husband. That's a good woman. But that's the female principle. That's why you men there, open your hearts to your feminine sides. Bring that female principle in and get yourself balanced. Half male, half female. For those women who are too feminine, bring a little bit of male in there and balance out a little bit. Find that center where you're, you don't feel you're either one, where your soul, your consciousness. And you can play either game. So, thank you. I have a few questions. It is so amazing to see the children's temperature, or no, 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 let me read this again. It is so amazing to see the children's temperament and attitudes change. Thank you, Mother. That's just what I'm talking about. That's why this program is excellent for prisons, mental health institutes, where these poor souls have no, nobody helping them, giving them uh, antidepressants and, and anti, uh, anti anxiety meds. Give me a friggin' break. What do we do to our, our fellow God people? <laughs> God doing it to God. But, uh, you know, it's enough to say uh, there's so much help. We can offer nursing homes, get half of these people out of their mental health clinics. We can clean those places out. Uh, you know, all these prisons, we can change. And she's seeing it, and you see it, it changes the whole personality. It changes the temperament. So you lose the fear and the things like that because you become whole again. You become one again. Isn't that cool? And so you become strong again. And you need to, because the world isn't doing too good. And for those that are not strong, survival is not predicted to be well. I have uh, talked to a few energy workers that say if you clear a genetic blockage, that it will clear that blockage for everyone related to you that has the same blockage. I don't agree with that, but I'll just let it stand, but I don't agree with that. Every one is an individual, and even though they come through the gene pool, and this gene pool is in the mental worlds, in the causal world particularly, it is still within your Akashic Record Bank. So uh, changing your genetic makeup changes the past, I mean your mom and your dads and stuff like that, 
I mean, you can see a universal communication like in the, we were talking about the bacterial kingdom. You can mutate a bacteria here in America and see that mutation show up in Europe in about three days. I mean, there, there, there's something going on on this planet. But I've never seen this, and I've regenerated a lot of genetic weaknesses, and I've never seen a change in their children. I've never seen that. So I, I, I just really disagree with this because I've had experience in re, re remembering genetically cells, a lot of it. And I've done that with a lot of different people with families, and I never see their children genetically change with them. I just I don't see that. For instance, if I were to clear my, uh, oh, I got the I got the picture, parathyroid blockage, it would clear it for my children and even sisters or mother. I don't believe that. And I, I, I'm just saying, I just I, I haven't seen that in my work. Uh, if it's true, yee that would be so cool. But I've not seen that, and I've worked a lot with moms with babies, and even I've worked with moms with teenagers, moms with, you know, children in their 20s and 30s. So I've just not seen that. If it's true, happy days are here again. That could really change the whole surface of the planet. But no matter true or not, you want to go after your own genetic remembering. You want to rebuild the kidneys and the adrenals and everything else. See, because you're a closed house in here. And yes, there are etheric energies. And yes, 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 yes. But you know, go after your body and make it healthy. And I love you for the kids, going after these kids. And it just changes them. I said this many times before. You you inflame, you acidify a child, and you got a hyperactive child. Big time. What do you think? Mercury and aluminum, they're acidic. So whenever you acidify the nervous system, then you're having problems. So, again, you, you see the differences in all ways, the peacefulness, the calmness, the more awakeness. And listen, when your kids get in school, their academic level goes way the heck up. Their, their the ability to comprehend is it shoots way up. Matter of fact, scary in some cases. I've given some cases over the years, and some of these kids get scary on their teachers because they're so awake. You know, most of these teachers are not awake. They don't even teach properly. No offense to you teachers. I love you guys, but we've got to we've got to teach in pictures like Chinese. We've got to we we've got to, to to bring back simplicity and not try to create uh, 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 narcissistic elitists who just wreck the world. We need God people who bring love and harmony and peace and joy and happiness and truth to these uh, war torn planets. Hmm. I'm not sure if you can go into this topic on YouTube or not, but I have heard that ejaculation causes a loss of life force energy and it is draining, even for women. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I've been kicked off of YouTube a couple of times. I don't know why, because uh, I can get all these uh, owners of the YouTube healthy as all get out. You know... Uh, I did go into celibacy um, when I was a raw foodist. I wanted to uh, attempt that because I've also heard that the retention of semen, of course, is highly nutritive. You know, a lot of people try to make creams and stuff, but it's highly nutritive. So the retention of that, you know, there was this whole story about Samson and, the, and his power and all this stuff, and then his long hair and uh, and they cut his hair and he lost his power because he had his hair cut. If you look at that story, he also made love to a woman. So in that process of ejaculation, he lost his energy. Biblically, they only referred it to the hair instead of being truthful. But you're right on point. I mean, I've studied this for years myself. You have a lot more energy with the retention, but it's not as fun. <laughs> But it's a lot more energetic for sure. Definitely. It keeps pulling you back to the self again though. All these things keep pulling you back to the self. If you can maintain a good relationship like that, okay. I particularly, you know, going back and remembering those days and those days where you weren't celibate, uh, it didn't matter to me. I got so much energy, I don't care. I can't burn out like that. 
It just doesn't matter. You know, that's the thing is when you merge into the all, it doesn't matter what you do in creation because you are now humming to the tune of a different drummer. You are now living in the essence of all life and that power and that joy and that ecstasy and all of that, or at least some degree of that, uh, nothing matters anymore. Your bodies don't matter anymore. Whether you do this or that doesn't matter anymore because you already are home. So it's just a matter of let's do it for doing it. That's all creation is anywhere to do it. You know, and it's just it's just for the experience of it. But if you are one that are trying to really get into the now and get into the self and you want to try celibacy, it is very, very powerful in that way. But, you know, I'm familiar. A lot of the masters talk about some of these um, monasteries and some of these uh, places where the monks go. And there's a lot of masturbation there. And, you know, one way or another, who cares? You know, yes and no. But the truth is the retention of that is very energetic and healing as well. So, definitely. So, we went on it. <laughs> Lastly, you usually teach uh, this in your classes, and I would love to be able to travel to Florida to attend one of your classes and meet you in person. Well, here's a big cyber hug. Good woman. Though I don't have the monetary means to do that at the moment, so, well, we'll see what we can do to help you. So, I was wondering if you could possibly do a YouTube video on how to travel out of body. I would really love to learn this. You got a good wife, man. You know, you think about this out of body traveling. If you're not your physical body, then who are you? Right? If you're not your emotions and you can get behind your emotions, who are you? If you can get beyond thought and thinking, who are you? So, this is a universal question. Is it, I think, therefore I am? Or, is it, I am, therefore I think? And it is always, I am, God first, I am, all that I am. I'm an eternal, infinite being, having a physical experience having an emotional experience, having a mental experience, because you're having all of these experiences simultaneously. The physical body can't think. The physical body can only has five senses to feel, but the, the feelings are all moved and, and, and sent to the astral body. And even to the mental body in terms of memory and experiences of... So the emotional, mental, and physical bodies are so wrapped that that feeling of joy is another body than the physical body, but it's hard for you to realize that because they're so interwoven. So all out-of-body traveling really is, is removing your attention from this world, pulling back. Remember we talk about those paintings that has all the dots, and you can, if you look at it, you can't see, but if you pull back, and you, you don't look at it, you, you look, it's just part of the allness of the now, you'll see the images. So, in a technique that you use, a good technique is to simply lay. And it doesn't matter what position, but if you either lay prone or you're back straight up, it works better. You feel better with that. But just get relaxed to where you can just relax so much that if, you know, you don't want to fall. You just want to be so relaxed and relaxed. Now, pretend, use your imagination, that's your attention. Aha! Uh -huh. Your imagination is your attention. And put it on the ceiling looking down at yourself. While you're, while you're getting relaxing, 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 put your attention, not your body, you can't move the body, you can't put your body on the ceiling. Lay it down, quiet it down, quiet, quiet, quiet down. I'm going to move my awareness, my attention, which is my awareness, I'm going to move that wherever I want to. If I have a favorite place on the beach, I'm going to put myself, I'm going to get my body just so relaxed and I'm going to in my consciousness. I'm not going to invoke my body's muscles or, or nervous system. I want it to lay down and just sit, lay there. 
I, I want to go to my spot on the beach. So I'm going to put myself at the beach. Not invoking the physical body. Mmm, I smell the water. I can smell the ocean. I'm surrendering more and more to that scene. I'm there. I can smell, I can feel my feet walking on the sand. Pop, I'm there. I'm on the beach. My body's laying there. I'm on the beach, fully conscious. I don't know what my body's doing. My attention is in my astral or in another body. It's easy. It's easy. I've been working on non-traveling because I'm working on the now. But traveling is fun and should be experienced. And your spiritual guide can pick you up and take you to some of these incredible cities that exist on some of these higher heavens or dimensions. You, 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 jeweled cities of jewels. <laughs> and if you've never seen, I've told a lot of you this before, if you've never seen the Thousand Petal Lotus, if they, a lot of the yogas have never seen the thousand petal lotus and where they get the lotus. Where do you see the thousand petal lotus? It's atop of three mountaintops in the Shaheshwadel Kanmal region of the astral world. And it is a powerhouse of the astral world and the physical world. So where the God force powers up these worlds and it emanates colors and power and visitors are always going there and it's like every you've never seen so many colors. It's just amazing. Ooh, ooh. Powerful. Powerful. Whew. Man. Those are the things that are fun. This planet is a warring planet. So we want to bring the light and the power and the love here, but the, the power of beauty and joy and of honesty and integrity. At the same time, you don't want to get stuck here. You want to open your eyes up to the other bodies that you're using now, and you can be in any one of them you want. As long as you can learn how to simply relax from one body and move to another. And all you have to do is surrender and let go. Just let go. But your consciousness, your attention is somewhere else. But your body is relaxed, 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 relaxed. Remember I told you that from the beach, my first out-of-body experience. I was in my van. I was laying down. I was laying I was trying to relax and relax and relax. But in my trying to relax, I was trying to and I didn't realize that subtlety of that. And I just said, crap. But as soon as I just finally just totally let go, which I didn't, I thought I was, I was out. And there was these two brilliant beings beside me, and we were going down the beach. And I'm going, boom, back, in the, back into my body like nobody's business. Freaked me right out. And I just, that just inspired me to do it again and again. Yeah. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Start accepting the beauty of your all divinity, the power and the beauty of who you guys really are, and your abilities to be so much more, to experience so much more than this little planet and these little bitty experiences that we set up for ourselves. This is your little Peyton place. If you don't like it, change it. You're the creator. You can change anything you want. It doesn't matter. So have fun. Appreciate the question. And bro, you got a really nice wife here that's into all the good stuff. You know, this is a keeper. So um, love you all very much. And I appreciate all that. I think we're going to cut off now. About Everybody's going to be going home here in a minute. But I uh, keep plowing through here. So Rick, you're up next. But... Um, Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in and have fun in life and relax and don't take it too seriously. If you take uh, this play too seriously, it'll get you and choke you. And this is just a bunch of uh, humans that uh, don't understand truth running around uh, claiming all kinds of claims. You be the God person coming down and introduce the light, love, and truth of health and vitality to this planet. And uh, you'll be extremely grateful you did. Love you guys. Take care.